G'day viewers and welcome to this episode of PB's Retro Restorations. If this is your first time here, I'd like to say thank you for taking a punt on my channel. It's much appreciated. I hope you like what you find here and to my regular viewers, a big thank you for sticking with me. If you haven't already, check out my other videos and please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on board as a close personal friend of PB. This episode's project is a Matchbox Lesney number 46 Pickford's removal van, kindly donated by Johnny V's Custom Garage Tasmania, who Mrs. PB and I had the pleasure of visiting whilst in Tassie earlier this year. Thank you very much, Johnny V. Now, the 1961 Matchbox catalogue saw the number 46 Morris Minor replaced by the Pickford's removal van. First in blue and very briefly with a two-line decal, it was soon replaced with a four-line decal and aside from some wheel variations, it stayed that way until 1963 when it was released in green. 1963 also gave us the hard-to-find Beals, Beelson's department stores promotional model. The standard green model then remained so until 1968 when it was superseded by the Mercedes-Benz 300 SE. So with the history lesson out of the way, let's get crack a as they say in the removals industry, most likely, and get this van back on the road. So this is a fairly straightforward Lesney casting. Uh, the base plate just tabs into the body, so there's no rivets. We've just got to gently, and by gently I mean just lever it out and hopefully not break anything to kick off. Tape on here, viewers. Now, I want to use some paint stripper or caustic soda to strip the paint off the base. The wheels being plastic necessitate that they be removed lest they be melted away with the paint. So, I'm just gently grinding the ends off. Don't forget that one end of each axle has a slightly thinner mushroom on it. That's the one you want to attack, and uh, the wheels will come off fairly easily. I've been using caustic soda lately and while it's very good for getting every nook and cranny uh, it can also damage the die cast if you leave it in there too long and I've, I've found with some castings it doesn't matter how long you leave it in it all turns to crap so on the Pontiac Grand Prix as you can see there and this one I used paint stripper and it, it worked really well on both of them. I spotted this at my local hammer barn a couple of sad days ago, viewers, uh, in the rotary tool section. It's a little, they call it a polishing disc. It's more like a polishing brush. Uh, I think the bristles are rubber or some kind of plastic, and it says they're imbued with a polishing compound. So uh, I thought I'd give it a go. I think it was like 15 bucks. Uh, I'm assuming they're plastic. I really don't know. Um, the sound effects are going to drop in and out here because once again I had that ultrasonic cleaner going and it got it right into the sound so bear with me viewers. It works really quickly and really effectively. It starts shining it up in no time at all. But it also does seem to be marking and leaving some, you know, fine scratches in the die car. So I decided to give it a breather and go back to the Y wheel for a minute. The 
But then as I looked at it, I thought, well, it's not, it doesn't seem to be doing too much damage. So I went back to the Ryobi one and thought, I'll just go all the way over it. And I guess we'll all learn something if it ruins it. And if it works, I'll look like an internet hero again. And once that was done, I went over it with the Scotch Bright pad just to even it out a bit more. And I think a combination of the twos worked really good. Uh, I'm not sure how it would go on castings with more fine detailing. Uh, but it doesn't seem to have eroded any of the fine detailing on this one. So, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so this is one of the sections that I had to mute because the ultrasonic cleaner was making a, all sorts of a carry-on in the background. Uh, so here we go. Wait for it. Tap, 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 tap. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, music now. I swore to myself I wouldn't ever have to do this again, but anyway. Oh, I can't even do it anymore. This is ridiculous. Now, because this is one of those castings that doesn't have any posts, I'm going to super glue a screw up onto the inside of the body so I can got something to put my little alligator clip on. Uh, now, full credit to Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. That's where I saw this tip. Uh, Marty needs no introduction. You, everybody knows him. He's the OG. Uh, it's a brilliant idea. And as you can see, it gives you a better place to hang on to. And they'll just snap off later when you're done. Here I'm using Tamiya Semi Gloss Black. Uh, straight out of the jar into my airbrush. Um, I think it works really well. I also give the wheels a coat with it as well. Just to give them a freshen up because you now around the edges they get a bit white from age. It uh, just helps to brighten them all back up. For all of the body, I decided that to me, uh, Park Green was a pretty close match for the original. Uh, and it was going on beautifully. It really looked wonderful when I finished. But none of that matters, viewers, because you know this is one of those times where things didn't quite work out for me. And uh, we'll discuss that shortly.
Yes, it was looking really good. I was super pleased. I was stoked with how it was looking. But that doesn't matter because... Anyway, you'll see. Too. You're looking a bit yellow, viewers. See you on the other side. I bought these decals from my man at the diecast fair. They looked a bit old. I just figured they were new old stock and it'd be okay when I started putting them on. And you know, put them in the water, start putting them on, and, and they were okay with that backing paper out. It almost, it even gave them that bit of an age that the originals have, like, which I know sounds stupid, but it actually made, gave it a bit of authenticity. And anyway, they looked really good for a, for a little while. Yes. Got those on both sides nice and straight and a little bit of a patinaed look to them. It was looking really good. And then I clear coated them. And they wrinkled up something fierce like they did on the Leyland 4 ton truck that I did that time. And I thought that happened because it was lack of paint underneath. But this time I'd used acrylic and had exactly the same thing. So I think it might be, I think I might have got the decals from the same place too. So they're just not compatible with the clear I use. So anyway, I tried to work with it. It's actually smoothed it right out. see here it all crazed it when I clear coated it and I was just going to try and get it off and sand it and buy some more decals but sanding on this side has left the decal and taken so I'm going to try that nothing ventured nothing gained eh viewers so I did that and worked on getting them nice and smooth and I got them really flat and it was looking pretty good I thought great I'll just clear coat it again Problem solved. Zzz, wrong. Problem not solved. They just crazed up again. Like, so I had to strip the whole thing and start again and order a new set of decals. But anyway, I'll always tell you when it doesn't go to plan for me, viewers. Uh, anyway, here's me putting the wheels back on. When you're putting the axles back in, make sure you got the same ends on each end, so they match. And that was noisy, wasn't it, viewers? Anyway, like the Pontiac the other week, uh, I went a little bit too hard on the wheels, and I'm just giving a little bit of a touch-up with some Tamiya panel line just to just to neaten them back up. Now, I'm not going to punish you with me stripping it and doing it all again and repainting it. So here's an awesome multi-layered montage of me doing it. Taking up the paint and doing it again and it's great again. <laughs> Please don't unsubscribe. I won't do it again. Um, got some decals from Black Square this time. Uh, I don't know that the font and the letters is quite as accurate as the other decals I had but you know what I'll take a slight inaccuracy and not destroying themselves when I clear coat them over the other option anyway here it is and here I am putting them on the thrills never stop here at PB's
Well, it's too much glue again. One day I'll work it out, viewers. One day. You dog mongrel. Obviously not made to actually work. What a piece of shit. That's why I bought these and didn't 3D print them because, well, I want them to work like the original did. Now, fortunately, I bought two of them, so hopefully it'll sit in there without bending. I, it's really grind my gears, viewers. Well, that's you. I don't think even heating these up are going to make it work, viewers. I'm a two minds whether to stick it like halfway up, like it's in situ, or glue it together and just stick it in there. I'm going to try some hot water first on this one, but if that doesn't work, I'll tell you what. It's been raining all week, viewers. I'm actually doing this on the Thursday night before the video goes live because it's 
It's been raining all week and I just had to let it sit and dry. And I thought I'll just duck out the shed and spend a couple of minutes finishing this off. I was kidding myself, wasn't I? It's never working. What a load of crap. Let's see if this has become any more malleable. No, it's just going to snap. There is no point pretending this is going to work. Well, that went well, if nothing else. So just like that, as if by magic, with no grief whatsoever, viewers, we're done. Hooray! Okay, back to the start with another one of Johnny V's generous donations to the channel. Thanks, Johnny V. Hope it's not too cold down there from Tassie. Uh, number 46 Pickford's removal van. You'll remember at the start I said this is a pretty straightforward casting, viewers. Not going to be too much grief here, wasn't I wrong? What an idiot. I really gave myself the kiss of death there. But anyway, this is what I started with. And after toing and throwing and all the stuff you've just seen, this is what we're left with now. Ta-da! Looking almost a million bucks despite its best efforts to not be. Um, fresh paint. 
new decals. Well, two lots of fresh paint, two lots of fresh decals, a snapped roller door that doesn't work. Um, but if I don't tell everyone that it doesn't work, we'll be all good. Now, that decals, they've got, you know, the white is sort of washed out in a couple of places of them, which is a bit disappointing. And the first decals that crinkled on me, they really looked the part. The fonts were right. Everything was right about them, except the clear coating ruined them. Apart from that, they are brilliant. The roller door on the back looks the part, but it, as you saw, as far as being a proper functioning and operating replacement, no. Uh, anyway, I really like the end result. Um, I hope you've liked this video. This well-loved original belonged to my late Uncle Phil uh, from his childhood collection. I should take some more photos of his cars, just, you know, if you're interested, let me know in the comments. Uh, he's the reason I'm, I love these cars so much. Miss Uncle Phil. Okay, serious business now, viewers. I have to give a very special happy 11th birthday shout-out to my nephew, Dylan, Mr. The Niz. Dylan, I hope you have a fantastic 11th birthday, mate. I hope the day's been everything you hoped it would be. I hope you get lots of cool stuff. And the rest of the weekend is as awesome as today's been. Thanks for watching to the end. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're sad this video is over, don't be. There's hundreds of other fun videos to watch right now on PB's Retro Restorations YouTube channel. You never know what you'll find. I'm not sure what the next one will be. But it'll be something amazing, no doubt, probably. I hope you all have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and I hope to see you again on the next episode of PB's Retro Restorations. Bye!